When you log into your CPM book, you always want to log in through my plan. So even if you spend some time away from it and it logs you out, please always go through my plan. There will be a tile for you. It will look different than this. My tile is not uploaded yet because it's summertime. But once you get into my plan, you should be able to click on a link that has CPM on it and you'll go ahead and click on it and it should take you to the login page. Now on your login page, you will likely have just the integrated one book. You may also have the Spanish version, but you'll go ahead and click on that book. And it will take you to your online book. You can see it's all organized in chapters right here. And the way this book is organized, it's chapter, section, and then lesson. So for example, I can click on chapter one here, and I can see it's organized by chapter, chapter one, this is section one and this is lesson two in that section. So if you click on the opening, it'll tell you a little bit about that chapter. So this chapter's function is, uh, this chapter's main idea is functions. It also has a guiding question. What are you going to be looking at throughout the chapter? And then it has an overview, including this chapter outline where it talks about what you'll be doing in each section. So the next thing I want to look at is add an actual lesson. So let's go to chapter three. And if we go to chapter three, let's go to um, section two, lesson one. So 3.2.1. And here I can see kind of the main idea, some problems here. And then I can also see that inside I have some e-tools. Anytime there's an e-tool, there's a link there. And so you can use that link to explore some of the things that help you answer the questions. So the student e-tool. Sometimes it'll be through Desmos and sometimes it'll be through CPM. But if you click on it, then you can use the e-tool to help you answer some of those questions. And then you will need to, at the top, click back to the book and continue on with the problems. So in each of these, we can see that there's also something called math notes. These math notes are normally review and they're expected to be known for the lesson. So if you don't know them well, this will be a, a section for you to always review. So the math notes are going to talk about previous content that you're going to need for this particular section. And if you notice, some of the words are in blue. Anytime a word is in blue and you can click on it, it's a vocabulary word. And if you click on it, it will often give you a definition and some examples. So anytime you see a word in blue, you can click on it. And then you get to something called review and preview. With the review and preview, you will always have a link that you can get homework help on. So this homework help will take you to another site and will give you some hints sometimes. Sometimes it'll give you some steps and sometimes it will give you answers. It doesn't always give you all of them. So if you are looking, for example, uh, for homework help, let's go ahead and look at problem 77 and we've got A, B, C, and D. And if we click on homework help, you can see that right here it'll give me a step and then it'll give me a second step and then it will also give me an answer. Um, however, sometimes it'll just give you a hint or ask you to refer to another problem. Now here, it took me to a separate page. So you can click back up on your tabs, back to your book, or if you wanted to do some more problems to check your answers all at once, you could go to lesson 321, which is the lesson that we're on. And then say you did all of your work and you're just going through and checking your answers. So say you wanna check also problem 81. You can see on here, there's an e-tool to help you with that. So the e-tool can help you answer these questions right here as you're going through. So you can use the e-tool to solve each part and it's an interactive web tool. If you want um, the full version, you can go ahead and click on this e-tool and it'll bring you up to Desmos and give you a full screen to help check your answer on that. Um, and then as you click on these buttons, it will show you what it looks like at each of those steps. So then you want to click back to your book if you wanted to get back to your other problems. And then it continues to give you some e-tools you can use. And we will be talking a lot about Desmos this year. Some more e-tools all the way to the bottom. 
So then I also want to point out something that this book has that your other book did not is the closure problems. So the closure problems is like a mini review slash pretest. So if you click on this is for chapter three, the closure problems. It takes you to what everything this whole chapter was about. What did you learn about? It's got all of these learning log entries that you've done throughout and it'll take you back to those. The math notes, any math notes you needed, and you can just click on them and they'll take you right to that section and that problem. Making connections, here are all your vocabulary words, and again, if you click on them, it will give you a definition and usually a visual to go along with that. And then what we're going to be working with a lot is it will give you a bunch of problems. So on these problems, so here's our closure problems, that's what the CL stands for, it's going to give you a, a little mini practice test and it's going to let you self-correct it. So all of these questions are questions from the chapter that help you review the chapter and then if you continue scrolling, you'll see that here we've got our closure problem. So for this particular closure problem, these are the solutions. And if you had trouble with them, here's where you can go to, to for help and you can click on it, it'll take you right there. Um, that's where these, these problems came from. And then more practice with similar problems. So if this was a problem you didn't quite understand how to do, you may wanna look up some of these resources and then try more problems like that. So those are all of the closure problems. And then the one last thing that's in for every chapter is something called a checkpoint. And it's not really embedded within the chapter. You have to look under resources for that. There will be one question in here for chapter three. And what a checkpoint is, is a place where you're making sure you have mastered old material. So for example, let's look at the chapter three checkpoint. And to do that, we need to go down to reference. Once I click on reference, a whole new tab will open up. And under, under reference, I see this checkpoints button. And if I click on it, it will take me to all of the different checkpoints throughout the whole book. And these are review problems. So remember, we're on chapter three. So the checkpoint for chapter three is operations with rational numbers. Now this is something you've probably learned before. Maybe you hadn't quite mastered it and this is the place to now do it because from now on it will be expected that you will know how to do this very fluently. And so there will be a problem in your chapter 3, problem 106, and that is your checkpoint problem. So here are your answers to the checkpoint problem. Say you missed some of them or you need a little bit of review. It gives you some examples and then also gives you some practice problems. In addition to those practice problems, it also gives you the answers. So you can really check to make sure that you got that down. And again, that's under reference and then checkpoints and then whatever chapter. Also under reference, you have a glossary if you need to look some things up and also an index if you need to find something within the book. So this is a broad overview on how to use the online book. It's very useful, easy to get around to different places, and we will be using it quite a bit in class.